Welcome back, friends. Here we are for episode three of Restoring Our Victorian. Thank you for joining us. We can't tell you how much your love and support means, especially on these days when it's hot, we're tired, we're dirty. Uh, knowing that you're following along and that you care about what's happening here at Miss Melly in Monticello, Arkansas really means a ton. So what are we going to be showing you this weekend? Well, sometimes restoration means really, really unglamorous things like just hauling trash out of your house. So first day, trash removal, an exciting trip to the dump and some extreme silliness along the way. Then second day, we're going to be actually getting into the nitty gritty of construction. We're going to be telling you about pressure treated lumber, why it's important. And then we're going to show you how to sister in some joists to support your floor and support your old structure. So everybody grab some popcorn, watch us work hard. up at the crack of dawn no we didn't we woke up at the crack of 10. we're early morning people i think it's important for people to understand that even port people even port people <laughs> even people portly people you portly talking about people me? who love restoration have days when they don't want to do it oh and today is that, <laughs> it's day, that day and we are the one shut up You shut up. 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 Yeah, that's what I thought. You shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Take your time. It smells delicious. Three minutes, 51 seconds is what that took. Hello? Three minutes, 51 seconds after it took me like two hours to load it up. It's gotta be a record. Now. I think so. Let the silliness ensue. They can listen to me breathe hard now. <laughs> watch you watch sweat. Me, watch me sweat. You are an A number one champion sweater, sweetheart. Yeah, we'll also have the record for unloading. You do, you have now set the record. <laughs> There's the it's bar, time people. Time to beat. Time to beat. That's a time to beat. Well, how about the smell? It's oh, good, though, wow. right? I told you. It, it is. Good. It is as horrific as I had imagined. You guys enjoy the smell? Mm. Isn't that nice? There's no way to describe it, really. Woo! Can we go home now? Are we done for the day? I feel like we've done something. We have done something. We've done something. Nothing of any note really yet but you're of any note you're of any note should we make a bet i bet you five whole dollars the martins is going to have everything we need i'll come up with something we need but won't be on the list. Uh, no no <laughs> I want you to know that the little hardware store had everything that we need, and now someone owes me five dollars. Who owes me five dollars, Kevin? Um, uh, did you overpay? What happened? <laughs> we are gonna be here all the day today. We're gonna we're we're play some floor joists today. So yeah. I know, and I told Kevin I have a real bad case of the I don't want tos today. Hey, but it's Monday. Go for it. I know. I know. We gotta get it done though. <laughs> we just got back from choosing our lumber to replace the joists here in Melly. 
we looked for the straightest boards that we could find with the fewest knots, and that's what you're always gonna look for. We got pressure treated lumber. Well, what is pressure treated lumber? It's lumber that is put into a vat, all of the air is sucked out, creating a vacuum. Then they put in a combination of chemicals, including chromium, copper, and arsenic. A combination of those three prevent rot and insect infestation. Look at the difference in wood grain, the density between the 110, 120 year old heart pine on the bottom and the brand new pressure treated lumber on the top. Alrighty then. It has been a long and sweaty day of trash removal and we are prepping for our day tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be the day, the big day when we start sistering in these joists and showing you guys how to do some actual construction work. But we have one more really important treatment that we need to do before we start that. We are going to be applying some disodium octoborate tetrahydrate. Sounds real fancy, doesn't it? Well, all that is, is boric hair. What is boric hair? It's basically borax. Um, why are we applying this though? Well, as you can see here, we have these little, they look like dust drips that are on our joists and on our wall back here. Those are the telltale sign of the elusive and destructive powder post beetle. So why are we applying boric hair or borax to these beans? Boric hair, borax, is highly toxic to termites, powder post beetles, and a lot of different fungi. And it's a once, basically a once in a lifetime application. Once we spray this on here, these joists are protected for the rest of infinitum and infinitum. Not only that, we're protecting the new wood that we put in here from these wood eating insects. And the great thing about this product is it's basically harmless. It's basically no more harmless to humans or pets than table salt is. And it's borate sodium. So basically it's salt, sodium but it kills these nasty little buggers we have living in our wood. So I'm gonna make sure that I get all of this wood really nicely saturated, and we're not gonna to have to worry about these nasty little insects in our old joists or in our new joists. So here we go. So take two on the sprayer because the mister quit working. So let's kill some beetles. What you doing, Lane? I lost my earring back. <laughs> Is earring back? Do earrings and restoration go together? Always. Are you kidding? Beauty before labor? <laughs> I don't know where it is. It's in my favorite earring. It's missing. Nothing. Stop filming me and help me look. All right, I will. Success. Kevin found it. Yay. Now we may proceed with restoration work. With beautiful earrings. Yes, always. My swallows for good luck. For the most part, our joists are still strong. They've got some damage on the top, but we've taken care of all the dry rot and we have hardened them with wood hardener. Uh, this one, however, has got a lot of damage as you can see up here. So we're just gonna take it out and just completely replace it. Here goes. <laughs> Middling leaves. Green. That's the reason we want to keep these best as we can. I know you can probably hear how hard it is for the blade to go through this heart pine. We had a drop ceiling uh, from our 1909 house. They actually dropped the ceiling in 1929 and we had to take that ceiling down and it took us nine saw blades. We went through nine saw blades to get that ceiling down. That's how dense this wood is. All right, so we're gonna cut it off straight. Then we're gonna cut our notches out.
take my favorite saw, my oscillating saw, and cut out this notch. got it leveled up with our other board and drilled two holes through and I'm putting bolts through now so this will be sistered up real nice with the piece that we left here before now we'll be doing the whole board on the rest of them Telling the people, Kevin. Tell the people my butt is in the way. Yes, it's okay. Let the people look at your butt. We are cutting the joists to length, where they still lap at the end like they're supposed to. We are adhering them to the old joist with construction adhesive, clamping that down. Then we're double drilling for two bolts about two feet in on either end. So these joists are going nowhere really fast. Our four beautiful new sister joists. We're halfway through the room. We'll come back in a couple of weeks. We'll get the other sistered in. We'll finish up with some screws and hangers. But those are nice and level. They're going to give us a strong level floor for another 127 years. So that's how you do one of the scariest of all foundation repairs. It's actually not frightening at all. It sounds terrifying. Your joists are rotten. What do you do? You do just what we did. You measure, you cut, you slide it into place. You use that construction adhesive to clamp and adhere it to your old joists if you are gonna keep them to sister in. You secure it with bolts, voila, you're done. Now, we do have next week, we're gonna come back in and we're gonna add some screws on um, a few little finishing touches. We'll show you that, that next week. But all in all, this is a really simple process, not something to be afraid of. Now it's time for history lessons with Lane. Something you'll learn about Kevin and I as you watch these videos and you get more ingrained and engrossed in our restoration nation is that we don't just come in and rehabilitate houses. There are lots of shows out there that are just about fixing up houses. And those shows often renovate homes, which means they really come in with no regard whatsoever to the history of the people who occupied the homes and go willy-nilly doing whatever they want to. We have a completely different uh, attitude toward these historic structures. We see ourselves as merely the most recent caretakers of an important structure that is housed the lives of so many important and exciting people who came before us. And yes, we do believe that everybody is important. Even the most mundane life has amazing gifts that it's giving into the world. And so we work really hard to remember those and make the remembrance of those part of what we do with our restoration process. So we work really hard to tell the stories of the people who came before us. So we wanted to tell you a little bit about 
one of the amazing people who came before us in Miss Millie, and that was Judge Ezra Clifton Bond Jr. Now, Judge Bond lived in Monticello most of his life. We know that he went to high school over in Warren because we had his letterman's jackets next door, but he graduated from high school in 1944. Now, if you know anything about history, you know it. in 1944, we were at the very height of World War II. The war, the war would be wrapping up the next year, but at that point, who knew how long it was going to continue? So Judge Bond enlisted right away in the army and he became a paratrooper, but he didn't just become a paratrooper. He entered a battalion that was the very first battalion of snow jumpers. So he was trained specially to parachute out of a plane during wartime and land in freezing Arctic conditions. His actually his snow jumper suit was found next door among his possessions after he passed away and his cousin is now in possession of that. So the way we look at it, we had the original Bond, Judge Bond, in our house who was a snow jumper in World War II. And this is a cert certificate of appreciation for a proud World War II veteran. So that's a little bit of history about one of the fascinating people who lived and owned our Melly. Once again, the lack of daylight and the abundance of heat have nipped our project in the bud. We didn't get quite as far this weekend as we had hoped to, but we did get half of our new floor joists down, which is really, really, really exciting. I hope we showed you that foundation repairs aren't nearly as frightening as they sound. They can be done by you, as long as you know what materials you need and what steps it takes. We also taught you a little bit of the history about this beautiful home, and we took you on an exciting trip to the dump. So give us next week off. We're not gonna be doing any restoration over the 4th of July weekend. And then we will give you a walkthrough of Janie next door. And then we'll be back the next week doing more hard work on our beautiful Melly. Join us next time for Restoring Our Victorian. Bye guys.